Hello friends and welcome back to another replay. This time we are in the Hellcat. Um, many of you know it because it's one of the most famous uh, uh, tank destroyers out there. It's a tier 6 American turreted tank destroyer. Um, let's see, I've had this uh, since the second campaign, so um, I have been enjoying it, so I've been playing it quite a bit. Uh, let's see, what can I tell you about this uh, tank? Well, it carries the 90mm ATM-3 gun. Uh, the AP has a pen of 160. AVCR has a pen of 243. The HE has 45. In terms of damage, the average is 240 hit points for either AP or APCR. 320 if you pen the HE. And the turret, well, let's see. The stock turret and the upgraded turret, they have both basically the same view range. The only difference is the, um, is the turret armor. For example, the stock has 25 mm millimeters in the front, 12 for the sides and the back. But the upgraded has 76 in the front, 31 for the sides and 27 for the back and the view range is about like say 370 you know depending on your crew of course and um, like for example if you have situation awareness or recon uh, for your commander then that view range extended which is you know still good it's pretty much you know above average the engine has 460 uh, horsepower with a top speed of 72 kilometers per hour. Now, the um, for tier six, the DPM is not as good as many others, but still not bad. I mean, it's definitely faster than the Su-100Y. The aim time is not so horrible, and um, you can equip it it with many of the equipments uh, available but it's best to have the binoculars because as we have just First seen blood. I was actually spotting all the other tanks that are coming through the Abbey you know and um, just as that the speed however this tank has been nerfed so they took away um, to they took away traverse speed, they took away the uh, turret uh, turn, also the aim has been nerfed, um, but other than that it's still good, and the camera rating is still amazing, but because of the garbage hull armor, you know, if you get shot by uh, by an HE from, a, like, let's say, the VK uh, over there, and it panned, you can be just devastated. And from what we've seen uh, here, it's a 36% chance to win. And these stats, you know, the chance of win should not be discouraging, you know, because you can always play to the maximum of your abilities and set that as your, um, let's say, a challenge. It's just an obstacle that you have to uh, overcome and play as a team. And here we can see the enemy is already progressing from the 8 line. And we are managing to uh, have control over the 1 2. Now it all depends on the, uh, the Oni and the KV 1 plus the 88 if they can work together. But we're starting to lose tanks a bit too fast. And here you see me go where the Su-100Y is stationed. Basically because I want to uh, control the engagement, use my view range to spot whatever's coming to the front. Also to control um, the midsection, the Abbey. And because of the wonderful camera rating, you can just use these bushes and maximize the, uh, the camera rating. Enemy is hit. 
Now that tier 5 Sherman is really eaten up. Look at that. They're knocked down. That's just one of the wonderful things about the Hellcat. We're going back to try and spot this uh, OI expert. Penetration. And we take him. 253, that's above uh, average. We didn't even scratch them. And those Japanese heavies, they really have poor view range. And we just exploited that. And we, you know, helped our team take him down. Uh, let's see. 8 to 9. And so far we know they have a T-150 going from the beach, they have a Stuk 3 and a Skoda right in the uh, in the midsection there. Uh, let's see if the binoculars kick in and we can spot them and uh, see where they are. But unfortunately the push to cap failed and our guys are coming back. And, uh, yeah, KV-2 and OI sniping, uh, good luck. Penetration. Let's see, my greatest nemesis right now are the artillery. If those guys, you know, because this uh, tank is an open turret, and if the HE shell just drops in here, oh god. Enemy armor is hit! Goodbye to that guy. Let's see, we lost our Sherman, so we have no idea if the T-150 is coming back or not, if he's, uh, what he's doing, because I haven't seen him in a while. And not until like a minute later that I realize the T-150 is platooned with a tier 5, uh, the artillery, the French Army. And he's probably now going back instead of attacking and lighting for his army. So let's see. The E25 sneaks in. And there we go. Another high roll. And we know that we can run the vehicle destroyed. That's it. 143 damage taken by that ramp. But it's doable. It's manageable, we can do that. And yep. Basically, right now, we're just staying safe from the arty shells and going back to see if that T-150 is going to push, since we all attack the E-25 or not. Uh, KV-2 is still in place. He has decent hit points. Um, the Su-100Y is pushing for some odd reason. I thought he was going to snipe with the KV-2, but he's not. And we spot the Skoda, and we're still waiting a little bit, you know, to see if that T-150 Heavy is coming back or not. Let's see, T-150 has 195 hit points left, therefore I can probably one-shot him and take him out of the equation, but still. Yeah, there is no way he's coming back, and the Shkoda is probably just trying to be play defensive, and this is when I make the decision to go and be more aggressive. Now, the Su-100Y, as in chat, how does this guy know I'm coming from here? Well, let's see. We have three tanks versus theirs, and he's the only one in the midsection. So he can either be uh, aggressive, or he can be defensive. You know, try to light his uh, uh, his base for his RT and whatever sitting out there. And here's when I switch to high explosive rounds. You know. Seriously, it's a way to shoot APCR on uh, sinking artillery and just save some credit, basically. Uh, 
I think the KV2 spotted the uh, the Shkoda, and because he's low in health, Ultra kill. that's exactly what happens. Had I shot the APCR, probably would have only tracked him and wasted more credit. But yeah. Right now, I was just hoping, you know, artilleries would be sitting over here. They will be spotted. If they're Five sitting in the back, warning. probably yet she will take them out. The T-150 has been spotted. I'm thinking, okay, maybe I can bring him down just by small margin. If not, maybe a blind shell from the etchies will, you know, take out or splash some of the artillery. But no joy. And this is where I'm, you know, working with the artillery on my team. This is where you need to be more com communicate, you know, communicate more with the other guys, so you can either spot for them, or you know, just try to overflank and control the map. And uh, yep. So basically, I'm gonna sit here, try maybe go there or just go down. So the options are, go here and die like the KV-2 and the Su-100, go around and probably uh, be expected by the artillery, or let's see. Think it. The enemy team has a heavy tank and two artilleries. Um, the tier 5 is a premium artillery, so uh, and it has very fast reloads and not a bad aim time. It can dish out as many shells and uh, take me out easily. Three minutes left. It's also good for uh, uh, shotgunning other tanks, so. It's going to be a challenge. And um, let's see, the T-150. It's a chance really now. Because you, know, you can't count on RNG. Everything in this game, well, can be put to chance if you want to. So right now, we spotted th their cab and uh, there was nothing. We go here, try to light them still nothing and so maybe go in try to you know proxy them for our uh, RT so we can deliver some shots bring them down and I waited for the binoculars and there's still nothing So basically the binoculars extend the view range by 25%. So yeah, that's just awesome. bit of assist damage and that shot came from the back so right now the T-150 is not there um, Art is still shooting therefore it must be the T-150 cab in us and at this point I'm guessing you know the, the artillery the might be here here by our cap or just advancing to our cap. Ready to fire. Target released. Alright, that was a bad shot and uh, our RT died unfortunately. 
but he managed to light that T-150 uh, and then we take him out. 30 seconds left. Yep, the T-150 carried more of the uh, defense, uh, of basically the cap boys, so taking him out would be amazing and awesome. Okay, so look at this. Heading towards the cap, but turning the turret just slightly to anticipate, you know, the angle. Five, four, and we're three, running out of time. Two, one. How about that, ladies and gentlemen? This is your 36% chance to win. <laughs> no problem, buddy. Well, let's uh, go to uh, post battle stats. Alright, so here we see that uh, we managed to get a mastery badge, ace tanker, bruiser, fire for effect, defender, high caliber, top gun, and a kamikaze for ramming that E25, a tier 7 uh, German tank destroyer. We managed to get 3092 in damage, 6 kills, and a basic of XP of 1377. Thankfully we had uh, premium time at the time and we uh, managed to net 10,340 in credit and uh, thankfully we had personal missions payouts running and therefore we managed to get 2,273 in XP and the free XP 102. So yes, um, this is where you see the XVM chance of win is not really set in stone. You can always challenge that, challenge yourself, play to the maximum of your abilities and try to go out there and win it. Be a good team player, communicate, try to look at the minimap, see where the enemy is coming from, and try to anticipate and basically it's not only outplaying the enemy but also outplaying that stat thing and of course just go out there have fun win it and do the best that you can do thank you for being here and thank you for stopping by hopefully you like this video and um, there's another Hellcat video coming up and uh, see you soon